Hmm. Period. Harvard Westlake, comma, always doing their own thing. Raise your hand if you're done. Okay. Dylan, great job. Eon, great job. Thanos, great job. Give me one second, I'm already almost done grading them. Alex, great job. Very happy so far. This is great. You guys are killing it. Good job. Hey, Lance, you're up next. Lance, great job. Lance is back to being the better of the Matthews. <laughs> That's my boy. By the way, Lance, real quick, did you see the email that I sent you in regards to esports? Yeah, I did. Um, so for like setting my primary account, you want me to switch it to Epic? Yeah, but you're not split. You're apparently you're not going to lose anything though, so you should be okay. Yeah, because when the update came out, they said if you go to Epic, then your other account is just not active. So you just is like a like a brand new like alt account. Yeah. Okay. Gary, what happened? Oh no! What did I get wrong? Hold on one second. No. Oh, wait, I forgot to create the class. And your constructor signature. Wait, really? Yep. You put a uh, class quiz string Y. Yeah, you asked for one parameter though. Yeah, but the constructor's public quiz. Oh, shoot. Okay. Okay, is Alan in here? Is the inside correct though? Uh, yeah, your inside was good. So I give oh. you partial credit. So you were good there. Um, Alan. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go over this real quick and oh no, it's not in class. Okay. All right, so all right, so here's the thing. So let me I want to close your grade books. Okay, so your great your quizzes are in. Okay, so here was the rubric that I used. Okay. So as if you guys so the question. That I asked was, oops, hold on one second, let me pop it back up here. Pearl props, okay. So the question that I specifically asked was, let me get back on here. I asked, create a class, okay? So here's the rubric that I use, okay? Create a class without a main method called quiz. So as you can see, public class quiz. So you got a point for just doing that and making sure that you close it. Create two global string variables, okay? 
X and Y, write a constructor that accepts a parameter. Good, also named Y, good. To be passed to global Y. In your constructor, manually assign X to null. X equals null, you got a point, and you got two points, this dot Y equals Y. Okay, how many of you guys did that? A lot of you guys did that, which is good, okay? So that was the rubric. So it was a seven point quiz, okay? So uh, it's, you guys should have done hopefully pretty well on it, okay? So that being said, all right, let's go, let's get started. Okay, so what I need you guys to do right now is I need you guys to open up your, uh, your account class, okay? So one of the things that I, I did, um, Okay, one of the things that I did is, um, oh, I forgot to pause the recording. Remind me, somebody remind me at the end of this class to uh, to write an email to my international students saying, don't watch the video first. So uh, take your quiz first. All right, so that being said, okay, let me pop this open. Let me go to your guys' bank accounts. Here we go. Um, And here we go, bank account. Okay, so uh, no, okay, so we had our bank account, okay, and we had our constructor. Again, we have our default constructor and our overloaded constructor. Now, the other thing that you guys need should know is this. Let's say, for example, that I gave you this. Let's say on a quiz, okay, or on a test, if I gave you this information, if I said account ACC one equals new account. And I said, John and uh, 10.5, okay? Let's say I gave you just this line on a quiz and I told you write the class, okay? Can you, do you have enough information at least, it's at least to write the class in the constructor just by looking at this line? Yeah. Yes, you do, and here's why. Do we know what the class name is? Yes, yeah. account. So we would say public class account. This Now, again, as I told you, more than likely nine times out of 10, you won't have a default constructor. You'll have an empty, you'll just have a basic regular constructor like this. So you won't even have that, okay? So you have your, so you have a constructor with two parameters, okay? One is a string, one is a double. One's a name and one's an amount. So you have enough information to say, okay, I can make the two global variables string name, double, whatever, num, whatever it needs to be. And because I know this, I, and because I know a constructor's main rule is to initialize global variables, I have enough to go ahead and do this, okay? You sh which is basically backwards constructing the class. So we went over constructors, and again, I can still go on with constructors. We are, we're still not done with constructors, okay? So we're gonna go back to them, but right now, what we're gonna talk about right now is methods, okay? So if you have a bank account, Logan, what's something that you can do in a bank? You can deposit cash. Bingo, so we can deposit cash. So what we're going to do is we're gonna start off by creating our first method, okay? And that method is called deposit, okay? So we're going to say public. Okay, because this is the method that we want to use. We're going to get into public and private later. That is literally a full class. Don't worry, we're going to get into that. Okay, so those of you who know public and private, you're not going to, you think you know it, you're going to know it even better when I'm done with you. Okay, so public, basically saying, okay, this is something that I can use. All right, then the next thing that I'm going to use is this. So this is public. Okay, I'm going to say, in this case, double. Now is where things start getting real. Okay, public double, all right? Double is what we call a return type. Now, if you guys remember, I told you that on the AP, system.out.println is not tested, okay? It isn't tested. Returns are tested, and we'll get into returns in a second, but this is called a return type. And basically what you can look at a return type is, is it's basically when this method is finished, it is going to spit something back to this class or to something, okay? This is telling you what thing it's going to spit back. Now, I just chose double because we're probably gonna spit back a double, okay? We have double, 
uh, there's int, there's string. Let's say we made um, a different type of object or a different class called quizzes, public quiz. That means you would return a quiz object back. We're gonna get more into that later, but the return type is basically saying, when I am completely finished with this method, what spits back? So you'll need to know that you can double and string. Those are the most common ones along with object types, but you're also gonna see this, which you've seen before, void. If you see void, basically what that means is you're not gonna spit anything back. In particular, and remember this word return, you're not going to use the return keyword. So again, it's a little bit of information, but it's all going to make sense. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go back to double, okay? public double, and I'm gonna call this balance, okay? Public double balance, all right? So public is what it is. Double is the return type, meaning when this is done, it's going to spit a double, some form of a double back to me, and then balance, okay? Balance is the name of the method, okay? Does balance need a parameter, Eubin? Think carefully, think slowly. Think about what balance does or what, I'm sorry, not balance. Sorry, this shouldn't be balance, sorry. This should hey, be deposit. Confused. Yeah, sorry about that, deposit. What the heck? Okay, deposit, all right. Public double deposit, all right? Is deposit going to need a parameter? No. What is the role of deposit? The role it's, of deposit is to increase what you have in balance, right? Yeah. So if I need to do that, I need to have yeah. an amount that I'm going to increase it by, right? So I'm just going to put double X, okay? So double X, or I can even put deposit, all right? Now, so public double deposit double X. Now you'll notice there's an error. That error is going to go away. So let's say that I call on this method. Okay, I'm going to call on this method. All right, first of all, what Alex, okay, Alex by, what is the code? Okay, now basically what's going to happen is I'm going to call on it from here. And whatever I put in the parameters for my deposit, it's going to be sent to X. With X, I'm going to add it to balance. So what would I do, Alex? Maybe like this dot double plus equals X. This dot double? Or just, I mean, this dot balance. I can say this dot balance, but do I need to use the word this? No. No. Okay. I can say this dot balance, or because this variable is a different name, I can just say balance. Okay. I'll stick with this dot balance. Okay. Plus equals X. Okay. Now that's it. Is there anything else that I need to do? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to return the balance. Okay. You have now succeeded in adhering to the rules of this method. So if I take a look here in this class, okay, so I'm going to save this real quick and I go to here, ACC1, okay, you're now I've got John and 10.5. Where, where am I having an error here? There we go. Okay, so let's say I now say, so right off the bat, I have started with $10.50. Let's say that I say ACC1 dot deposit. 10 or 100. Okay. Now, notice nothing happened. We'll get into that in a second. But if I print out ACC1 dot balance, what's my new balance going to be? Dylan. 110.5. Bingo. So if I run this, my new balance is 110.5. The reason why when I created my object, I had an initial balance. I ran my deposit method, which is pretty much what you're doing whenever you go to a bank. I deposit 100 bucks, that $100 then gets added to the initial amount and then I report it back. Now notice what didn't happen, okay? The return, okay? The return statement didn't happen, all right? Now, when I did this, because basically what is happening is when I run this code, technically the balance is being sent back. 
but I'm not doing anything with it. Okay, so there's two things that I can do with it. One, I can just print this out. Okay, so what will happen is I will run the deposit in a print statement and it's going to print out what gets returned. 110.5. Or double new amount equals, and I can do this and then just print out new amount. Okay. All right. The key thing that you have to understand is the return is not a print statement. A return sends back data. Okay. Again, the return is not a print statement, guys. The return spits back data. If that data isn't used, it's what's collected in what we call the garbage collector. Okay. You kind of need to know that term because it's actually used. All right. It's stored in what's called the digital garbage collector. But again, the key thing that I have people thinking is that a return is a print statement. It's not. The return is the last thing run in a method. Can I have multiple return statements in a method? Yes, because if something is something, return this. Else, return this. But at the same time, I don't want you thinking that you can't use a print statement. Okay, so for example, let's say I now, let's say what I want them to do is when they run this balance or when they run this deposit method, I want to print out your new balance is plus balance. Okay, so now if I just get rid of this and I just run the method as is, your new balance is 110.5. And then it spits back, it spits back a return. So basically we are losing some data here, okay? So that being said, you have, again, I cannot stress how much people, uh, what's it called? Um, how many mistakes people make with the return statement. Now, what I want you guys to do, what time did class start? 110, right? We have till 140? Or 150? 150. Okay, perfect. I'm going to give you guys two minutes. I want you guys right now, again, uh, I want you to return, or I want you to create the withdraw method. And I want you to create it properly, which means you're going to have to account for certain things. And it returns the balance. I'll give you one more minute. and time. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I want to say public double balance or uh, withdraw. Okay. 
The one thing you have to realize is on the AP question, guys, on the AP free response, you are going to be filling out methods. Very, very, pray, 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 pray that they give you a question where you have to write the class. Because if they do, it's going to be as easy as the quiz. Okay, not joking. It's an easy nine points. If you ever see, if it ever says, write the start, the question starts off with, write the class, just thank the Lord and be happy or Lord, whatever, chakra, guna, whatever, I'm just trying to be inclusive, whatever. Okay, uh, <laughs> just thank whoever, because that is going to be the easiest question that you have on the AP. It's an easy nine points. Thank them, especially when I'm done with you guys. Okay, but most of the time, they are going to give you the method signature all the way up to here you will know what you're returning, okay? So public double withdraw, okay? Do I need a parameter for a withdraw? Yes, I do, because I need to find out what I'm going to be withdrawing. So I'm going to say double X again, it's fine. Remember, this X has no idea that this X exists. So the next thing I'm going to do is I have to now do a checker. This is what I was looking for, okay? If X is greater than balance, return balance, okay? Because what happens? Now, a lot of times what you can do is you can also put a print statement in there saying, hey, you've overdrawn your funds. No way, sorry, can't, can't do anything, boom, okay? Otherwise, Okay, if X is greater than balance, return balance. That's gonna be the first thing. Now take a look what I'm doing, okay? I can do an else if, or I can just do the code outside of the if statement because it's always gonna check this if first, okay? So what I'm gonna do, this would be what we would call the default return statement. So what I'm gonna say is I'm going to say balance minus equals X. And then I'm going to say return balance. I can also say return balance minus equals X. Simplicity sake, that works too. And that will also subtract from the balance. So for example, Right now, if I ran this, so I did my deposit of 110, right? So let's say I did ACC1. I'm going to just print it out right now, okay? So let's say I did ACC1 dot withdraw, let's say 40 bucks, okay? At this point, how much money should be left over? I got a 110.50 at this point, and I'm withdrawing 40. Okay, what should it print out? 70.50. 70.50. Bingo. Perfect. 70.5. But what if I try to withdraw 140? It's going to say 110.5. It's going to say 110.50. Okay. So that's the thing that you have to keep in mind. Take a look at how easy I was able to do. This is what I want you guys to start getting into the habit of. Did I need an LSIF? So, uh, Ian. Are you technically right if I use an LSIF? If I were to store this like in an LSIF? Yeah. Okay, if so this, is this or just an else? Okay, is this technically right? Yeah. Yes, it is. Okay, this works perfectly fine. Do I have any reason to mark you off? No, but most of the time there's no even reason to write the else. Okay, you can just do the initial test in this method and just go from there. If Because it's gonna run the if first. Now, if you accidentally put it here, which also happens, will you ever be able to check if the balance? No, because it's automatically gonna return first. This doesn't even matter and you error out, okay? So the, uh, the placement is very, very, very important, okay? Now, that, so guys, we still have, there's so much more with methods and stuff like that that I'm still tempted to even push your test. I may push your test to the first week of November, okay? There's a possibility, because if you remember next Wednesday, either it's next Wednesday or next Thursday, we have a guest speaker, not to mention that we have Monday off, okay? And we still have a lot to cover, 
Okay. So what we covered today was methods. Now the key thing also, this is the big mistake that people make also. What does the constructor not have? What was this called? RT are the initials. Dylan, what is this called? A return type. The return type. What does a constructor not have? A return type. A return type. I will see people go like this. You have not, you now, your class doesn't have a constructor. This is a method that you tried to create. Constructors do not have return types. Return types can be anything, double, string, whatever, whatever. That doesn't matter, okay? The key thing that you, that you need to know is uh, if you use a return type and you are stating a specific return type, whether it's an object or a primitive, you need to return that type of thing. The only one is, let's say, for example, let's say we just did void. If I have void, you do not use a return. It can still work. And take a look. Most of the time, when people are doing uh, when people are doing return or voids, what they're doing is they're basically using print statements. So they're going to shoot back a print statement. Is my method still correct? Yes. But listen to this. Uh, pay attention to this, especially in the questions. You will hear, you will, the word will be written. The method returns. If you hear the word returns, okay, you are returning something. The, literally on the AP, you're getting a point for this and it needs to be correct. You need to be returning the right thing. The other thing that I want you to remember also is this, okay? Let's say this was public string. Okay, public string withdrawal. Notice that the return type and the parameters don't match, right? Okay, the parameter has nothing to do with the return type. So right now, what I could do is this. So technically I could say, your new balance is plus balance. Okay, and then I could say, command copy, command B. Okay, now I can either return a string variable or I can return a literal. Are both of these strings, are they both running this right way? The key thing that I want you to pay attention to in particular in this, okay, this has nothing to do with this. A lot of times you'll have methods with multiple parameters, okay? One has nothing to do with the other, all right? So in your book, what I want you guys to do, I want you to pay attention to, okay, how many of you guys already read chapter 15? Okay, now they're going over the bank. All right, so what I want you to do right now is I just want you, and again, we've kind of done a lot of it, a lot of it. I want you to do project overdrawn at the bank, okay? So that is gonna be your homework, chapter 15, project overdrawn at the bank, all right? Now, tomorrow is Thursday, right? So there's a possibility tomorrow, I may do a review session to go over objects and classes again, okay? Just so that we have an understanding of what it is. If you already got a good, some of you guys did, the quiz score so far have been great. I'm really proud of you guys, okay? So, but if you don't need to be there, no need, but project 15 uh, overdrawn at the bank, okay? Sound good? All right, so that's class today, guys. Good job. Um, your quizzes are very nearly all scored. I will have them up probably within the next five minutes. And again, especially with classes, guys, I would rewatch these videos, okay? I go over them really well. I go over them slowly. And again, if you have any questions, ask during class, okay? Do not be afraid to go slow. It is barely the middle of October. The, the exam is not until May. So, all right, guys, take care.